Wonderful. Here we're beginning this week's Torah reading. And this week's Torah reading is uh, talking about the Jews actually going out of Egypt, preparing to go out of Egypt. And before they did that, they offered up a Pesach lamb, sacrificial lamb. First commandment that the Jewish people, the first sacrifice the Jewish people made. And this week also contains the first commandment that was given to all the Jewish people, which is sanctifying the month, which we'll get to that. Today, we're not doing that. Today, we're just getting the, the preface, the preface that God speaks to Moses and he says, okay, Moses, you got 10 plagues, right? Well, there's only been seven of them. Three more plagues are on the way. Go and talk to Paro and tell him he should let the Jewish people go. And he's not going to let him do it. He won't do it. But I just want Paro to know that he is the cause of the decimation of his country. His stubborn heart is what is ruining his whole life. Huh? Is ruining his whole his life. And not only that, we're going to see, I mean, it's this, listen, let's face it, my friends, this story is a really bizarre story. And in fact, it makes absolutely no sense. Really, if you think about it, no sense whatsoever. What does God have to make 10 these weird, bizarre plagues? He wants to take the Jews out. Take them out. What's the problem? Take out the Jews. It's a lot easier, I think, to, to you know, just all of a sudden one day all the Egyptians go to sleep and all the Jews just leave. That's all. Such a big deal. God has to bring frogs and blood and, and hail and and uh, what is it? And fly, fleas all over the place with boils. And the animals die, and wild animals attack everybody. And I mean, these these things are really weird. And none of that, they didn't help. They didn't help. After all, Paro was not convinced. He was not convinced of all these plagues. They did absolutely nothing, right? Wrong, because we're reading about them here. These plagues have lasted, they didn't last one year. These plagues have lasted 3,300, and this year it's going to be 334 years. 3,334 years ago, God made all these bizarre plagues and smote the Egyptians. And finally, after everything, they, the Jews got out. And that's, that was just the beginning. Then after that, they got out, and the Egyptians ran after them. And they drowned in the sea. The sea split. And that, that was also not the end of the miracles. Right? There's a big, there's one. Mana came flowing down from heaven. And there was water that came from a rock. And there was clouds that surrounded them. And that was also nothing. The biggest miracle of all was all the Jews were taken to Mount Sinai. That's going to be in another couple of weeks. And they all received the Torah from God. And it's the same tour we have now today. And despite all of the enemies and the difficulties and the difficulties within, and the difficulties from without, and people have tried to weaken the Torah and weaken Judaism and, and deny the, the, the commandments and et cetera, and et cetera, and say there's no such thing as Jewish people and there's no such thing as God and there's no such thing as going on. All these logical and illogical enemies have somehow or other, which makes no sense, not succeeded. And the Jews have been 3,000 years, 2,000 years about, with no country and no army and no government and all this. And here we are. Here we are. And exactly the opposite. Now that we have a country and we've got an army, so they want to try to give everything away. You know. Now all of a sudden they're, we're in danger. and we, the Jewish people have been in danger for 2,000 years and we've been existing and holding our identity because of the Torah and because of this story that we're learning right now. And the Jews have been celebrating Passover, namely this story, for 3,300 since then. 3,300 years. Huh? <clears throat> that's, that's pretty, how do they call it? They used to call it in, in, in my days, they used to call it freaky. That is freaky. That is really weird. Think about it a little bit. And this is the basis of Judaism. All the time in our prayers, we're remembering Zechariah, Remember the day that God took us out of Egypt. 
So here it is. Okay, <clears throat> that's one thing is that it happened in the past and it gives us the power for now. But we also have to go out of Egypt right now. It's a little bit sort of a different Egypt. It's, it's, uh, the, the enemy is not so clear. Because as, we say, as we've said so many times, after the Jews got out of Egypt and they received the Torah and they saw God and they saw the miracles and they saw God's power and they saw that it also didn't help them either. 40 days after they worshipped the golden calf, they heard directly from God, speak on Mount Sinai, don't worship idols. According to most opinions, they only heard the first two commandments on the Ten Commandments. I am God that took you out of Egypt. In other words, worship me. And the second <coughs> commandment is don't have any other gods. Only Worship only the God that took you out of Egypt. And all of a sudden, they, they worship the golden calf. Okay, there's the explanations how they got around that. But nevertheless, idolatry. So we see that how we said hundreds of times already, God took the Jews out of Egypt, but he did not take the Egypt out of the Jews. And the Jews wanted to go back to Egypt, and they want to go back now. Okay, so the Rebbe, we learned the Sikh in the morning. Come in the morning to listen to the classes, huh? Or you can see them on, on YouTube. What's the solution? The solution is go into Paro. Go to the source of evil. The source of evil, and because we can't do that. Moses can do it. Because the source of evil is God. God creates, nothing is outside of God. God creates everything. That's the motto of Judaism. God is one. There's nothing in the world that's not being created by God including Paro, including all the evil. So let, let, let's not get too, um, how do you say, um, what's the word for it? Abstract. Oh, there was really a person called Paro. There was really a person called Paro. Uh, Paro. There was really a person called Moses. And there was, the creator is still here right now. And the fact is Moses and Paro are also here right now, but they're inside of us. And so we have to reveal the Moses inside of us and the Paro inside of us. And the God inside of us, uh, that might be a little bit harder, but let's go. By Yomer Hashem, that God said to Paro, Paro said to Moshe, Bo Paro. God said to Moses, go into Paro. Really, this word Bo does not mean go, it means come. Bo Paro, come into Paro. And in the Zohar, it says that God was taking Moses with him to the source of all evil. Okay, let's go. Let's let's just get simple meaning. God says, "Come into Paro." I've hardened his heart that lay above and the, the heart of his servants. Laman that I should put my signs, these miraculous signs, within him, into Paro. Let's just do the Ramban. Hodia <clears throat> God let Rabbi Moses ben Nachman. God said to Moses, should he lived like 100 years later after, right? Something like that. Look, I have to look at the exact dates. After the Maimonides. God here is announcing to Moses, that God is fortifying the hearts of Paro and his people. After Paro announced, if you remember in the last plague of hail, Paro announced, and he said, and he, and he said, then now I see that God, we, we, I was wrong. You were right. You can go. I'm sorry. We're all sinners, right? You're most, you're okay. <clears throat> now God is telling him, the reason is, why am I making Paro's heart hard again? Right? And when the, the plague of the hail, that was the sixth plague. I'm sorry, seventh, sorry, seventh plague. The seventh plague was the plague of the hail. So Paro said, I'm right. I'm you, sorry, Moses, you're right. I'm sorry. Moses, you're right. I'm wrong. I, 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 I made a mistake. You can go. I'm going to let you all go. Paro admitted it. But all of a sudden, Paro changes his mind again. Why is God doing this? Why? Laman shall seat bikirbam so that I can make all of these miracles, so that I want to make in them, that the, the Egyptians, in other words, the whole world, should know my power. I'm not telling them I'm, I'm punishing them anymore. Because of this, I'm doing it only 
because I want the world to know my powers. I can do all these bizarre miracles. But Ud and also Katesha to Sapir Ata, and also so you Jewish people should also talk in the future generations, call them, I say everything that I did. But they do, and you should know that I'm God. The call and everything that I want, I can do in the heavens and the earth. And that's what we're why do we remember going out of Egypt every day? So we remember what God we're serving over here. I mean, we're we're doing God's commandments and we're keeping God's Shabbat and we're uh, avoiding all the things God says to avoid, and we don't eat certain foods and we don't this. Why, why? Why are we doing all that? So we're doing it to serve God. Who is this God? This is the God that did all these amazing miracles. He controls the heaven controls the earth, controls every detail, cares about every detail. <clears throat> and he can do whatever he wants to with every detail in the world. That's the God that we're serving. Here it says, I want to put all my miracles. This is the Sophrona, Rabbi Avadia from Sophorno. Even though that Moshe said, I know that you still have not <clears throat> really, you're, you're really not afraid of God. Chasha, but nevertheless, Moses thought, even though that Paro had not really uh, big, uh, surrendered. To God, nevertheless, Yishma biyoto bilti Maybe he'll just say, "Listen, I can't take any more of these plagues. You, I decimated. You've decimated all of of Egypt. So, okay, Paro might say, "Listen, I don't believe in God. I don't know. I don't know what's going on over here. If it's witchcraft, if it's just you, just bad luck." But he, he thought maybe Paro would say. Okay, God, I don't believe in. I don't believe in all the story that you're trying to sell me. But, I mean, I see that my, my country is being destroyed. <laughs> that's what he thought when he, <clears throat> he saw that from the power of this, it, Moses thought that because of, the, of this last plague of, of uh, uh, hail, so we, Paro said, God is right and I'm wrong. But Kasher Rosh Im calls that nevertheless Lo Shema, Paro did not change his mind. So Moshe thought Shahayatah Hatra'ah Bolarik. So he thought, so what am I warning him for? What am I going to tell him all these warnings? I mean, do you see that the guy's is, is a maniac? Paro doesn't care if his whole country gets decimated. Kigam Shalu Yachol is bull, even if it's impossible for him to bear, Lo Yishma, he won't listen. Paro was saying, listen, it's better that I should die. Then I should give up. So with a person like that, what are you going to talk to him? Just give him the plagues, and that's it. What do you have to come in each time and warn him? Okay, and therefore, the only spoiler, therefore, <clears throat> God said to Moses, who even though the fact is you're right, Moses. He's not going to listen to you. The fact is, is that the God did not harden Paro's heart. Until the fifth plague. The fifth plague was the Shekhin. Right? The, the fifth plague was the Shekhin. I'm sorry, the sixth plague. From the sixth plague, the last five plagues. He's, Vazin, the, said, the reason I'm doing it is in order to make more miracles here. So that maybe a couple of the Egyptians, they will repent. And also, so the Jewish people will also tell the story in the future. And they will recognize my greatness and my goodness. Therefore, <clears throat> go in and warn Paro. It's not going to help with him, but it will help, even though Paro is not going to hear, that maybe some of the people, the Egyptians, they will understand, and they'll pass it on to the rest of the world. And also the Jewish people might understand, and they'll pass it on to their children as well. Number two, in order to in order that you will say, to your children and your children's children, that which I have done to Egypt and the miracles that I have Samtibam put in them, and you'll know that I am God. It says the Baal Haturim. It says you will tell your son and your grandson. 
it says up to his sons, his sons and his grandsons, <clears throat> that's when he feels an attachment of mercy to the, the, the three generations. After that, it's his family, but it's not close to him. Inami, or another answer. This corresponds to the three generations that were in Egypt. How many generations were? It says the fourth generation, they're the ones that went out. So the Jewish people were suffering. Every generation, according to this, was 50 years ago. So the, the, the fourth generation, they're the ones that left. So this corresponds to the three generations. You'll tell, and those three generations suffered. So three generations in the future will benefit you and your son and your son's son. Um, <clears throat> there's some really nice ones over here, but I don't, we haven't got that much time. So what can we do? Here, let's go. Um, Okay, um, in order that you should tell your children, <clears throat> so the Jewish people in the future should know all these things that happen, you and your future generations, you should know, what's you in the plural? You and the Egyptians should know in the future. That's what he says. Oh, uh, the Orach Chaim says like this. I'll just repeat it. <clears throat> he said, you should know what I did to Egypt and the miracles that I did. So he says, there's two things over here. <clears throat> you should tell in the ears of your children, your sons and your grandchildren, that which I did to Egypt and the miracles that I put on them. Isn't it the same thing? So he says, well, sort of it is, but really not. One thing is, is how God punished the Egyptians for what they did. And the other one is just the miracles themselves. Even if God would just do it in the middle of the desert, right? All of a sudden comes down hail with fire inside of it and frogs start jumping out of the out of the river from nowhere. Even if they didn't harm the Egyptians, just that the miracles themselves were things that were totally <clears throat> out of nature to show the greatness of God. That's what the Orachim says. <clears throat> but you have a motion, Aaron. <clears throat> okay, so Moses and Aaron, they came into Paro. The Yom were love, and they said, Ko Amar Hashem, Ivrim. So says God, the God of the Hebrew of the Hebrews. Ad Masai Me'anta, how long will you refuse La'anot to humble yourself Mepanai, before me, says God. Shalach Amin Yavduni, let my people go so they should serve me. Safrono says, since that you're not humbling yourself, even now that you saw my abilities, <clears throat> I, in fact, says God, you know that I could have taken the air, the very air you breathe, I could just take away the air, and you wouldn't be able to live a second. And you've seen all of the miracles that I've done. So if so, <clears throat> and you're still not afraid, there's no way that you're going to Repent because of any miracle that I do. You see that I what I could do to you. It's just a miracle you're still alive. I'm controlling all the <clears throat> the, the nature all around you, and I'm just sparing you. Should you see? You, you should you should see what's going on. So that what's going on around you doesn't affect you. Maybe you'll do tshuva because you see that the plagues have lasted a long time. One after another, after another. I mean, the king, you figure he wants to go home once in a while, you know, drink a beer, sitting in front of his... He can't do it. There's always a plague. Either there's a plague or trying to recover from a plague. Therefore, so therefore, that's what he says. Ad um, Masai, how long you refuse? And there's, Pharaoh, what do you think the limit is? What do you think? If I make plagues, let's say, for another year or another 10 years, you know, I mean, you want me to make it longer? I can make it, what about... 15 years of plagues, huh? How do you think about that? So the, par, he was hoping that Paro would say, that's what he said, Ad matai. what is the limit of time? Maybe the plagues won't do it, but after the, the, the time it takes, okay, therefore, the show, therefore, what time will the, you think the limit is, right? Maybe you have a wedding you have to go to, maybe if there's some sort of a, you know, you want to make your birthday party or something like that. 
uh, if I make plagues the next 10 years, it'll wreck all your plans. You, you have some sort of a... a <clears throat> Moses says, Ki'im, it's almost making fun of him. <clears throat> Ki'im, Mo'en ata, if you refuse to sin, my people, I will bring tomorrow Arbe, big wulech. What is Arbe? Arbe is locusts. <clears throat> locusts. Heaven as it says, it's some shame mean, it's some sort of a bug. Right? <clears throat> Maybe because it's bigger than all the other types of bugs, it's called arbe, means it's big. Well, we're going to see that it's going to eat up everything that there is, is arbe. The chiset ein oretz is going to cover up the whole, the whole appearance of the land. Below Yechali wrote that the oretz, you won't be able to see the land. The Kli Yakar says from this, it says that a blind person, when he eats, he really never gets pleasure. So he has to really try to control himself because he eats and he chomps away, but he doesn't get any, any real satisfaction from eating, so he can just keep eating. This is the same thing with the, Moses is telling us the same thing is going to be, that's the nature, not just of people, but also of animals. If it's blind, it can just keep eating all the time, because it's the only stimulation it gets is just from its mouth. It doesn't know. So it says the same thing with these, these uh, locusts. They won't even be able to see the ground. They won't be able to see what they're eating. If so, they'll eat without any end. They'll eat everything that's left over from the barad. It said that there was some of the foliage was left, the soft foliage was left, and they'll eat everything on the trees and the tzameach and everything that grows in the fields. Right, that's what the Kliyakar said. Umalu betecha, first of all, they'll fill your house. Now, this is a little bit unusual because usually a plague comes, so it starts from the outside and it moves in. But this is going to start from the inside. That the, all these locusts are going to make a bee line or a locust line, whatever you call it, directly into the house of Paro. They're going to go into Paro's house. And then afterwards, they'll go into the house of all of his servants. And then afterwards, the houses of all of the Egyptians. That your parents never saw it, and the parents, your grandparents, from the day that they were on the world until this day. And he left ran out, left Paro. He's disgusted. He left Paro. Why was he so disgusted? Was he disgusted? <clears throat> he said, because Paro, at, at the plague of the hail, so Paro said, right, Hashem HaTzadik Ba'ani Ba'ani HaRashayim. Paro admitted that God was right and that he was wrong. And all of a sudden he comes back and he says, no, I, I'm not going to, as soon as the plague of the 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 uh, hail went away. So Paro said, I said I was going to let you go. I, I, don't, I don't remember saying anything like that. You have it recorded, right? Of course you don't, because there's no recorded. The recorders haven't been invented yet. You have any uh, video, huh? A video? Uh, surveillance video? I never said such a thing, Moshe. I'm not letting you go. So Moshe got all angry. And therefore, he's angry at Paro. Therefore, upon of a he went away, like it says, with he treated Paro like any other normal person. Right? And did you promise me you'll do it? You'll let us go. You're reneging on your promise. I don't want to have anything to do with it. <clears throat> so Paro, we see that afterwards, Paro, uh, he gets back at Moses. We're going to see that poses, Ma, Paro calls Moses to come back, and it doesn't work. We'll see in one second. And Paro, in any case, Moses comes back, and Paro kicks Moses out. Right? All right, so we'll see, we'll see how this works. So that's what the uh, Kliyakar says. The, the, it's, it, the, it's a big miracle that the locusts came into uh, Paro's house first. And then afterwards, he said, well, the reason was very simply because Paro, he was the big sinner. He was the one that's already always encouraging his people, don't let the, the, uh, the Jews go. And don't look at me, I'm your example. Right? We're not going to let them go. Don't worry, you can rely on me, etc. Something like that happened also with the frogs. The frogs also, it said, the frogs went into you. The frogs also, they started with Paro's house because Paro was the instigator and he was the, the spirit of defiance against God. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> now the servants of Paro, they all of a sudden have a change of heart. And they say, Ad How long is this Moses going to be a stumbling block? Shalachat Anashim, let the people go, we have to do with Hashem. All they want to do is serve their God in the desert, wherever it is. Don't you know, right? Don't you know, Paro, that Egypt is being destroyed? The whole country is being destroyed. Let the Jews go. Get them out of here. We don't, <clears throat> they, they used to benefit us. No, they, and they, they've stopped working also. <clears throat> they used to come and clean our houses and things like that. <clears throat> it says they stopped that also. Moshe. So Paro, he brought back Moshe. Paro sent a messenger to bring back Moshe. It was Shiva El Paro to bring them back to Moses. El Paro. Paro said to them, Okay, okay. If do it Hashem go out and serve your God. Who exactly is going? <clears throat> okay, there's a beautiful kliyakar over here. And I'll just explain it to you outside. But let's first of all, let's go this is. Let's do it the other. <clears throat> and we have the Balaturim. <clears throat> Balaturim says, Miva Miochim. Para said to Moshe, What do you want? What do you want to go? You, you're gonna you think you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go back to the land of Israel? Where are you gonna go? <clears throat> Who tell me who's gonna go? Who do you want to bring into your, your land of Israel? You, you, <clears throat> Paro says, listen, I happen to know something about history. I know, and not only the history, I know what's going to be in the future. You're going to leave Israel. I'm sorry, you're going to leave Egypt. When you go into the desert, you're not all going to make it to Israel. I know the story. I know what's going to happen. You're all going to die in the desert, except Yeshua of a Caliph. Remember the Jewish people, what happened? After they left Egypt, so they got out. They got left out of Egypt. They got the Torah. And Moses said, okay, now let's go into the Holy Land, land of Israel. And everybody said, um, listen, Moses, send some spies so we know exactly, you know, case the place out. So he, Moses sent these uh, surveyors to go into the land and see what's going on. And they came back and they said, okay, Moses said, let's hear a report. And they said, don't go. And all the people said, we're not going. So God said, okay, you don't want to go? So you won't go. You're not going to go in the land of Israel. The only ones that made it from all the people were Yeshua the Caliph. That's what he means. Miva Mo'ilchim said, Miva Mi'ilchim, that's the gematria of Caliph Ben Yun. So he said, Paro said, I know what's going to happen. What do you want to take everybody out into the desert for? The fact of the matter is they're not going to make it to Israel. They're all going to die. Moses, right? I know what's going to be. You're going to refuse. That's what the Jewish people said. Moses, our, our young people and the elders are going to go because the decree of dying in the desert was only on the Jews that were from 20 years old and to 60. Anyone who's under 20 or over 60 didn't die in that decree of not going into the land of Israel. So, so that's what he said. Our young people, the people who are under 20, they are going to make it into Israel. And the elders who are over 60, they're also going to go to the land of Israel. That's what he wanted to go. That's what the Balatorian said. Ayoma <clears throat> Moshe. That's what Moses said. Our sons and our daughters will go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Our, our youth and our elders will go. Our sons and our daughters, our, our flock, our sheep and our cows will go because it's a holiday for God. It's a holiday to us for God. Okay, the, 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 this, um, the Oracha, the Kli Yaker, he explains something interesting. Uh, let me see if I can remember it. Here it says, the whole thing says the Kli Yaker. Kli Yaker is Rabbi what is Shlomo Milunchitz. He, he was a, contem a contemporary of the uh, Maharal of Prague, Maharal of Prague. They lived about the same time. This was something like, I don't know, 400 years ago, something like this. He was, he was younger than the Maharal of Prague. He was like sort of a pupil of his and he, he was assistant. He took over the, he was the rabbi of Prague after the Maharal passed away. 
Maromi Prag, for those of you who don't know, he made a human being. Among the other things, he made a human being. The golem that come from the Maromi Prag, Rabbi Yehuda Levi, Maromi Prag. He was a direct descendant of King David. And the rabies of Chabad are a direct descendant from him. The other family trees. <clears throat> okay, so here it goes. Moses said, Mi v'mi ha'holchim. Right? <clears throat> Paro said to Moses and Aaron, who and who ha'holchim are going? So the Kliyakar points out, that's not proper Hebrew, and the whole thing makes no sense. Paro should have said, Mi yelech, who will go? Mi v'mi ha'holchim means who and who are going. No one is going now. No one is going now. So he said, <clears throat> what Paro said is like this. You want to leave. Let's look around the world and see who goes, me and me, who goes to make sacrifices. Well, when there are sacrifices, who goes to make sacrifices? Look at all other nations in the world. Who goes? The men go. That's what he means. Me and me, go to the east, go to the west, go to the whole world. Who goes now to make sacrifices? Only the men. Moshe said, no, no. We're going, our, the young people and the old people, our sons and our daughters, our sheep and our cows are going. Why? Because you're right. Only the men are going to make sacrifices. But it's a holiday. It's a holiday to us, to God. And a camp person can't be happy unless his whole family is there with him. That's what the Kleokra says here. This Kleokra here, you can look at it. So therefore, we want to go and celebrate the holiday. Okay, we have the holiday Passover, and really it's the holiday of the family, right? The family is all together. The Jewish people went out of Egypt with the family. The family is the basic unit of, uh, of Judaism. Family. So it's so very, 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 very important to be married, so very, very essential to have children, a person that doesn't get married, doesn't have children, he it's, it, it feels bad. It feels bad. It's not that disqualifies him in some sort of way, but it's certainly not uh, the ideal situation. Okay. Paro says back to them, Good. <clears throat> Good. Uh, let it be so, like you said. <laughs> if I send you and your, and your children, I see there is bad in front of your eyes. Because I see that you're only intending to do bad things. We have no intention. We'll see Rashi in a second. I'll send you and your children and also your this. But it's only going to be bad for you. And because what are you going to go into the desert? You're going to go to the desert. You're all going to die over there. Like it says, You're running down <coughs> to, to, to death. You can't go into the desert. What are you going to bring to eat? That's what you're going to do. Rashi says a little bit different. He says, <coughs> I see Ra'a neged penechem. Ra is the name of this god or a star or whatever. <coughs> Paro says like this, even if I do send you and also your sheep and your Locks, like you say, but nevertheless, I see that Ra Neged Penechem. He says it's like the Targum. What does he say? Bisha, only bad things are going to be over there in in the desert. You only it's only going, bad is going to come out of it. And I said, Rashi, I heard a midrash, and it says that there's a star, and this star of what a star of of spiritual force, and its name is Ra'a. And Paro said to them, I see from my astrologers, <clears throat> my astrologers, my astronomers, my astrologers, that I see that this star is raising up to meet you in the desert. You're going in a bad time. And this is a sign of blood and destruction. And in fact, that's what it was. When the Jewish people sinned with the golden calf. God wanted to destroy them. So Moses said in his prayer, Lama Yomu Mitzrayim Hotziam, that God, you didn't kill them. It was this star, this spiritual force, Ra'ah, 
that's what killed. I think that the books, I mean, I remember reading, I don't, I'm not a big expert on Egyptology or whatever it is, but their big god was called Ra. That was their god, uh, Ra, with the sun god. Okay. And with Zu, that's what it said, Ra'uki Ra neged penechem. <clears throat> said, the, the, the Paro said, I see that the star, one of our stars, our powers is called Ra, and it's going to get you guys. It's going to get you guys if you go into the desert. And that's what Moses used this to the benefit when the Jewish people sinned with the golden calf. He said, everyone is going to say that the star, not, it wasn't you that killed the Jews. It was the star of the Egyptians that killed the Jews. It says that God recanted on the Ra, on the bad that he was going to do. But Ra is also the name of the star. And he tra transferred this blood to the blood of circumcision and that Yoshua circumcised all the Jews before they came into the land of Israel. And that's what it says, I have removed the, <clears throat> the disgrace of Egypt from you because I've taken away the blood that the Egyptians said was going to be caused by their star, this Ra'ah, and instead I've transformed it to the blood of circumcision. That's what they said. I see the blood in the desert. They thought it was the blood of destruction, but really is the blood of this covenant. In any case, <clears throat> Paro says, okay, Moses, what do you want? You want to take all the flock out, take all the sheep, the cattle, your wives, your children. Everybody says, no. The men can go. They do it Hashem, and they'll do service of God. That's what you want to do. And Paro had them evicted. That's what you said. Locate. You don't have to take the children with you. Only the men will go. Children don't make sacrifices. <clears throat> That's what you said. You want to sacrifice? Children don't make sacrifices. And so uh, Paro drove them out. What's going to happen tomorrow? We'll see tomorrow. Have a good day with Mashiach now. God willing, 8.15 tomorrow morning. And we'll continue learning about the name of God called Sva'ot. In the name of God, the Mimer, which is in the uh, Torah or Shalom of Racha, Chodesh Tov. Everyone, have a good month with Mashiach. Now, this has to be the last moments of exile and the first moments of the future redemption. We'll hear about it. Maybe it's happened already. We just were busy in the class that the base of Megdash fell down from heaven in Yerushalayim, <clears throat> and it's going to be in all the newspapers, Bez Hashem. Hine, hine, Mashiach Ba. See you all tomorrow with good news. Chodesh Tov, everyone. Chodesh Tov.